Hello YouTube and welcome. In this video I'll be showing you how to detect anonymous blob storage access and scenarios of why having blob storage public is pretty dangerous. You may have a damn good reason why that storage account has public access. Damn good. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. Wait, you're not doing your catchphrase? No, I do it all the time. I think you should do it though. Grab your coffee and some whiskey, it's gonna get juicy. That's better, I like that. Thanks. Azure Storage, the dangers of public access. Sounds like an action movie. You know there's definitely gonna be a sequel coming to this. The dangers of public access, part two. Okay, um, so as you're already maybe aware, Bob Storage is specifically designed to store massive amounts of unstructured data or data that doesn't adhere to a particular data model or definition like text or binary data. So here are some of the use cases where blob storage you know, really shines. So storing files for distributed access, storing data for backup and restore, uh, archiving data, disaster recovery, etc write into log files and then image files for like content delivery network. So while blob storage is optimal to store text binary files and images, these files can often include sensitive data. So the storage account functions. So a storage account has a unique uh, lowercase namespace along with a three to 24 character limit which can only contain numbers and letters. Again, lowercase. So a container in the storage account, which organizes a set of blobs, is similar to a directory in a file system. So every container associated uh, is, associated, is associated with public a uh, access level. I cannot talk this morning. So this access level can be private. So this means no public read access. So the container and its blobs can be accessed only with uh, an authorized request, so like a SAS token or a key. Um, next we have blob. So public read access for blobs only. So blobs within the container can be read by anonymous request, but the container data is not available anonymously. So anonymous clients cannot enumerate the blobs within the container. So the container is a public read access for the container and its blobs. So the container and blob data can be read by anonymous request, except for container permission settings and container metadata. So clients can enumerate blobs within the container by anonymous requests, but cannot enumerate containers within the storage account. So some options that Azure Blob offers for authorizing access to these resources are shared keys, so the storage account key, and the shared access token, so SAS. Um, I'm not talking about the um, special air services. So this is the most secured and preferred method of access. So the last type of resource that the Azure Blob Storage offers other than the storage account, the container is of course the blob. So this blob obviously resides in a container. So there's three types of blob here. So you've got block. So block blobs are optimized for uploading large amounts of data efficiently. So block blobs are compromised of blocks and each of those blocks are identified by a block ID. Then you have append. So append blob is composed of blocks and is optimized for append operations. So when you modify an append blob, blocks are added to the end of the blob instead of overwriting. Hence, you know, the append. So this is the same concept when you use PowerShell script and you have a uh, switch append at the end of it. You then have page blobs. So page blobs are a collection of 512 byte page is optimized for random read and write operations. Um, so fun fact, Azure Virtual Machine Disks are backed by page blobs. So hopefully the visual representation here gives you a a little bit more insight into the storage account architecture. So now we're kind of familiar with the concept of what a storage account is, 
which I hope you were watching this at the start of the video. Um, let's have a look at how we can enumerate uh, public storage access and then further detect on that enumeration. Okay, so firstly, I'll be using the Microverse tool, um, which is honestly a great pen test tool for Azure. It's been created by a guy called Carl Fasen. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description of this GitHub repo. You should go check it out. It's really nice work. Um, so firstly, I'm going to enumerate a domain name here. So if you're an adversary, you may do like recon on LinkedIn, find company information, and basically use that information to perform your enumeration and discovery techniques. So for this demonstration, I've created a test domain and a few resources called PickleRick2021. So let's assume PickleRick2021 is our actual business name. So let me just show you here, I've uh, imported the microburst module uh, right here. And as you can see, I haven't imported any Azure modules. So no Azure AD, no Azure RM, no AZ modules, nothing. So you don't actually need an Azure account to run this module. And you'll get the results that you need. So let me just clear the screen here. and I'm going to go invoke dash enumerate subdomains okay and then I'm going to go base and then here I'm going to go pickle rick 2021 and I'm just going to hit enter so what this is doing now is this is enumerating Azure websites azurewebsites.net uh, the on Microsoft domain um, it'll go through app services it'll go through key vaults um, any databases which retain to that name so honestly, this is a this is a pretty sick script. I've, I've got to be honest. Um, so with the power of video editing, I will fast forward. So this will be done. All right, all right, all right. So now that that's done, we can see that we have an app service called Pickle Rick two zero two one. Um, we've got the website here. We've got a key vault. Uh, we've got a blob storage account, files, queues, and tables. Okay, that's cool. So now I want to do some enumeration around the Azure Blob Storage. So again, we're just going to go, whoops, base here. And then I'm going to go pickle, rick, two, whoops, two, zero, two, one. And I'm going to hit this. So what this is doing now is this is actually enumerating everything within those storage accounts that has a public access. And holy crap, that was done pretty quick. So here we've got a container and within the container we can see that there's a templates container and we have a f two files here so the file uh, that's it azure deploy template file excellent and then there's another file which is a co.jpg okay let's have a look at this let me just copy this i'll open this in a new window <laughs> what a handsome chap what a handsome chat that is. Okay, so let me go back. Uh, okay, so we know that a deployment file doesn't contain any parameters. If it does contain parameters, then what are you doing? Um, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this parameter file and paste this in here. Wow, okay. So we've got some great information here. Okay, so we can see that uh, the admin username is Rick is God. The admin password is multi sucks two zero two one. Um, we've got a bastion host here, pickle Rick dot local. Okay, so uh, you know there's, there's a hell of a lot of information here within this R template. So it just goes to show you that having public access is 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 dangerous. Um, you know it, it's found a few containers here and that quick enumeration there just went through them all so i hope this has give you a little bit of insight into why this is you know serious so what i'll do is i'll actually hop over to the azure sentinel i'll we can run some queries and show you you know how the access was actually granted how we enumerated the uh, the blob storage account so think of this as like a honeypot exercise 
So let's hop over to the Sentinel dashboard and run a quick simple query and we can get this going. Oh, just before we do, it's worth noting that to capture this type of scenario, you will need the diagnostic logs preview enabled and those being sent to the log analytics workspace of where your Sentinel service is enabled. Okay, so we're now in the Sentinel dashboard um, and our first data source is storage blobs. So if I just run this, okay, we can see we've got a whole array of information here. Um, so let's filter this down to our specific uh, storage account. So we'll go account name, oops, equals equals, and then we'll go pick all Rick 2021 and then we'll just run this okay cool so let's just have a look at all of these so right off the bat I can see the status text says a resource not found so if we just scroll across here so we know in my storage account that from the enumeration that happened it only found uh, if actually I flick back onto the virtual machine it only found the templates container, a photos container, and a public container. So let me just go back again. So you can see here that the enumeration is using the permutations to go through and find any containers called accounting, API, artifacts, location, uh, DSC script, uh, link templates, SQL, uh, configuration, etc. So if we look at all the where authentication types and then contains, and then if we go our non Y mouse, okay, we can see we've got 91 uh, anonymous, uh, anonymous authentication uh, attempts. So this means that this storage account has clearly been uh, used for enumeration using the permutations. So then if we go where, um, what is it, status text? Status text and then equals and then resource. Not found, this should give me the same results. Oh, 80 results now. Okay, so now this is actually explicitly looking at all the um, attempts for the resource not found. So, uh, here we can just, just do a quick summarize. So if we go summarize and then attempts and then equals count and then oops, go by and then status text. Yeah, so there's been 80 attempts on here. So, you know, having a look, if we just get rid of this, let me just go back. Actually, let me get rid of that as well. And then, yeah, hit enter. So if we have a look at the ones that don't say anonymous and we look at success. Okay, what we're trying to look for here is the actual photos, there we go. So the ones here, photos, success. So you can see that it's been opened by the caller ID. Again, this isn't my public IP address. This is an Azure virtual machine. So don't try and hack me, you son of guns. Um, so we can see that he's actually opened, I mean he, just talking in third person here. I have actually opened this. Um, the duration was slightly longer than all of the enumerations, as you can see. So the resource not found duration millisecond is very, very small because it's just trying to see that container and if it's actually got anything in it. Once it grabs that container and, and it notifies that, hey, that actually lives in there, then it's gonna do the operation, get blob and find it for you. Um, so, you know, very, very simple query just to see, you know, what sort of blob storage is going on, what sort of access is going on. Again, this could be like a honeypot um, exercise. Um, you know, uh, maybe you could sexy this query up, do like a count threshold where uh, an IP address has made multiple attempts, you know, to try and get creative here. And just remember that adversaries will find anything and use everything to their advantage. So if they find an image uploaded to a blog container, maybe a picture of your dog, 
they will try and source the geotag that that picture came from. So as I showed you in the demonstration, there was a templates container which contained a deployment and a parameter JSON file. Uh, within that um, parameter file, it had information about the virtual machine deployment, along with the domain, the VM, the password. You're basically giving this adversary all the information on a plate and they can just go crazy, right? So unless there is a solid use case why you're using publicly accessible storage accounts, I would highly recommend you don't. I mean, for obvious reasons. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.